FM 94, The Dark. It is time to get to know a band we play here on The Dark. And tonight, uh, we're going to chat with the band Attican. And these guys are out of the Dallas, Texas area. On the phone right now, I'm talking to Ryan Ray, the lead singer of the band. And Ryan, first of all, thanks so much for joining me. And are you in Texas right now as we speak? Uh, yeah, man, absolutely. No problem. Thanks for having me. And yeah, I'm in, uh, I'm in Dallas, and it's actually pretty here today. But, uh, you know, that, that won't last. And uh, according to you, you said you're painting the inside of the tour bus right now, getting ready to go out on tour, huh? Yeah, um, I actually stole this idea. You know that uh, the band Vanna? Yeah. Uh, kind of. No, okay. So they, the inside of their trailer, they built um, these kind of like locker type things. So like each of the guys could have a section to hang their clothes and put their, you know, shoes and kind of stuff like that. So not, number one, you know, to save room in the uh, in the van and also to, um, you know, eliminate some of that show clothes smell. That was the thing. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm kind of copying. I built them already, and now I'm painting them black because that's rock and roll. Trying to give it the uh, new car smell kind of thing, huh? <laughs> yeah, you know, that paint huffing new car smell, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> hey, let's, uh, we want to get to know more about this band, Attican, and how did it all come about, first of all? How, how did it all start, Ryan? Okay, so it's a long story, but I'll condense it for you. Um there, there was a, a guy named Jason Shower. He was the bass player in the band. He actually started the band. He has since stepped down after our tour last year. Um, to uh, He has a recording studio here in, in Dallas that I actually work at as well, recording bands here. But um, he's got a, a daughter, and he wanted to you know, not be on the road. So he started the band several years ago, and then about three and a half years ago was when I joined, and they had lost their singer. And pretty much we scrapped everything that the band had ever done and started over. And... So Atticane, since 2012, is a different band than it was prior to that. And we've kind of been scrubbing the Internet and getting rid of all the old stuff. But, um, you know, pretty much, you know, where it is now is, uh, you know, we just finished the record with um, Tahaj Ticketon. He was the singer for the band Raw. Right. I remember them. Yep. You know, they had the, the You Call My Name. And, um, super amazing guy. But we went out to L.A. and did the record with him and um, finished it. You know, obviously it's... You know, coming out November 6th, and the pre-order is actually available now on iTunes and Google Play. We're doing this special where you uh, pre-order the album for five ninety nine, and you get uh, two tracks automatically. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, so, but the story of the band is pretty much, you know, we understand that, you know, and, and rock, you know, you need, to, you need to be out there. You need to be touring. You know, a lot of the time you're going to have to get fans one at a time because, you know, people either don't buy albums or, um, you know, I think that, People do still buy music, but um, you know we we just want to be we want to be in, able to be in touch and be able to you know for lack of a better phrase you know reach out and touch people and then actually you know get to know our fans and let them get to know us you know and um, you know I know we play hard rock and everything like that but the, the message is pretty is pretty positive you know we we like to kind of without being too preachy you know we want to treat people like we want to be treated and we think you know people in general we're all we're all one uh, we're all one in- entity and we should treat each other like that and so you know there's nothing wrong with having a good time at a rock show and getting wild and uh you know we're leaving some stress and we want to be we want to be that for people be whatever they need us to be so they can grab us and turn it on for whatever emotion they need to dial up or whatever they're going through or just you know just be that band for, those, for, for, for our fans and for our listeners very cool, very cool. We're talking uh, with Ryan Ray. He's the lead singer of the band Atticane. The name Atticane, uh, and do you know the origin of it, and uh, how did it all come about? Well, <laughs> we were actually having this talk the other day, and I was like, you know, when I do these interviews, I'm just going to lie every, every time <laughs> and make up a different story every Might as time. well. Yeah. It's actually uh, for um, uh, male um, performance problems. It's actually a medication. No, I'm just kidding. But it's, uh, <laughs> it kind of sounds like a medication or something, I think. But um, but uh, it actually our an, an old guitar player before this band a long time ago. Because, you know, bands like go through changes and evolution. So right. the band was called I think like a long time ago. The group of guys that were starting this band uh, kind of, it was called something else, and so they were going to change the name. And he was like addiction, you know, and you know, cane because it sounds like drugs. Not that it's supposed to be drug related, but like that the music is is addictive. So that's kind of where it came from. 
So you got the real story instead of the fabricated one I was going to tell you. <laughs> well, we only okay. want the real truth here on the dark, okay? I got you. I got you. <laughs> no problem. Hey, let's uh, talk about You mentioned it, and you were talking about, obviously, your former lead singer before and all that, and then you had to actually go out and kind of erase everything and kind of get everything back to yeah. where you wanted to be. Was that a difficult process to do? I mean, in today's world, it seems like, you do one thing and everybody knows about it, and it's almost impossible to get it back. Uh, was that not, a dif- not, I'm sorry. Go was ahead. it was it difficult to do or not too much? Uh, not really. I mean, and some of the old stuff is still out there, but it's fine. You know, I'm okay with living with it because the band went on a high before I before I joined the band in uh, 2012. The band was on a two year hiatus, so it wasn't like they were real prevalent. It was like they kind of had died down. They had toured, and um, you know, they were probably gonna either hang it up or whatever. Mm-hmm. But, um, no, nah, it wasn't that hard. I mean, really, with um, YouTube and stuff, you know, at this point, I'm not really concerned if people pull up one of the old songs and go, hey, that didn't sound like what you guys are doing, because, you know, it's fine. You know, whatever whatever gets them to be drawn, to, you know, to us, and, and you, know, the, you, know how the, you know how the deal is with the, with the digital uh, world and right. social media. You know, any, any press is good press, I guess is what they say, or what did Marilyn Manson say? He said I had an entire career based off of that. But pretty much exactly i think he did yeah that's that's what he said he, and he created yeah. it but that you know you sometimes you create that image and uh sometimes a negative image isn't a bad thing because everybody's talking about you at least correct and and, and the songs you know that, that that were there before i shouldn't even be talking about it but you know that's why i said i was going to give you the i was going to give you the download but uh it, they're not like it's not like they're terrible or something it's just not what the, it's not what the band is now the right. band the band really is recreated, and, and we kind of, when we were working with a, a producer before we worked with Sahaj, and he's like, you guys should change the name. And I was like, you know, why? It's a cool name. Right. There's not there's not another one. There is not, there's, in the whole world, you know, we, we have, and then all our, you know, website is just adicane.com. We don't, all our social media is just, you know, whatever, social media slash adicane. We don't have to do, like, adicane Dallas or adicane this band and, official, you know, any of that stuff. So it's... It, um, it's just one of those things. I really liked it, and I really like what it stood for. So I was like, there's no need to change it because we can just, you know, it will kind of like, okay, kind of like if you've ever listened to any of the old interviews from Korn when they first started. Yep. They were yep. like, they were like, it doesn't matter what the band name is. The music will make the band name take on whatever it needs to take on. Right. So that's kind of how I feel, too. I agree. I agree. Nothing wrong with that. We're talking with uh, Ryan Ray, the lead singer of the band Atticane. Uh, Ryan, let's get to know you a little bit more. Your musical background, uh, what did you listen to as a kid, and kind of what influenced you to get to where you well, are today? Well, my dad is a guitar teacher, and um, he is a jazz musician, and um, he started me when I was six. So actually, I didn't start singing um, professionally until um, in my 20s, and um, I, I grew up actually um, in school. I mean, I was... I had charts on the wall that I had to check off at home, like scales and arpeggios, and I played classical and classical guitar and jazz guitar, and I was in jazz band and classical ensemble and um, all that kind of stuff. And so I have a really fundamental background, and that's thanks to uh, my dad, which um, you know I, I put something about that in the liner notes of the album, you know about how he. <laughs> I was a six-year-old kid, and he was like, "All right." I'll, I'll, I'll agree to let you start playing guitar, but you have to agree that if I let you start, you won't quit. And he's talking to me like a man, and, and, I, and I had to shake his hand like we made a deal, like I'm not six <laughs> years old. Nice. And, uh, and he, he held me to it. He never let me give up. Not that I wanted to, but, you know, when you're a kid, stuff, you know, anything that's tough, you're like, man, I want to go play. And he's like, you can play after you practice your guitar for an hour. Right. Because every kid in the, he, he said every kid in the world can play, but who can play guitar? So, you know, he had me into... Um, a lot of that stuff, jazz, classical, and then Beatles. Jimi Hendrix was a huge, huge influence on me. Okay. And um, then, really, when I got to be a teenager, Metallica. Um, cause I was I was grew up in a real strict household, and I had to sneak down the street and listen to Metallica because my best friend had older brothers. Uh, I'm the <laughs> oldest of three, so the Black Album. Yep. Really, the first time I heard Zappa through, my head exploded because I, you know, think about like if you've never heard anything metal ever. And then you hear Sabbath Truth for the first time, having never even heard hard rock. Like, so my brain exploded. And then that was really what changed the direction for me. And then, um, you know, Pantera, uh, Dimebag Joel is my favorite right. player, him and, him and Jimi Hendrix. So that was really the direction that it headed. And then, of course, 
I really enjoyed all the, the new metal stuff when it was, you know, Corn was really influential on me. Um, uh, Lamb of God is a band that I okay, absolutely yeah. love. But, you know, it's just you can pull from those influences. And, of course, I really like, um, I like some Top 40 stuff, you know, and I like a lot of, uh, I like some hip-hop, but um, predominantly, like, what I listen to is, like, Seven Dust and uh, the new, you, you guys have been in that new Nothing More record, right? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, that record is incredible. I, I'm listening to, I was listening to it before I called you. But, um, so that's, that's what I'm into now, is I like music that has, you know, melody, and it means something, and it makes you feel something, and then, um, you know, that's, that's just kind of where I'm at. So that's, I know that's like a, a lot of information crammed into, you know, a few, a few sentences, but that's, you know, I really like everything, but my predominant listening is those kind of, those kind of things. Very cool, very cool. And, and that's what we kind of want to know. We kind of want to get to know your background a little bit because of the music that you're playing. And obviously, you're, uh, the song that we have currently right now, Hey Girl, has definitely got kind of that... Uh, that hard vibe to it a little bit. And uh, I want to talk about that song in just a moment, but before we get into that, I kind of want to chat a little bit more about some of the active rock bands currently out there. And you mentioned nothing more being one of them. And I would have to say they're the band of 2015 for sure this year, without a doubt. Uh, And I'm so happy about that too, because I mean, they're from San Antonio and I, I met, I played shows with them and other bands like 10 years ago. And those guys have put the ax to the grindstone and that's what it takes. That's what it takes to, to, to get it, you know. They're, they were banned for 10 years before they got a record deal. Right. You know. And, and that's what I was just going to bring up, because they're a band out of Texas, too. And the rock scene down in Texas is pretty strong, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, Dallas Dallas is um, is a big music town. And of course, you got Austin. And uh, San Antonio is um, not really known for rock music, but obviously nothing more came out of there, but... Right. You know, it's it's a, it's a big state with a lot of big media markets, so you're gonna get a nice blend of everything, and you get a, a nice, you know, you get a cool texture from a lot of this stuff. Because obviously, country is real strong here, blues is real strong here, um, and then metal is really strong in uh, in like the Dallas area. There's a lot of metal, like I'm, I mean, metal, not right. like our stuff isn't metal. Our stuff is, I guess, considered active rock or you know whatever. But I'm talking, you know, brutal. So. <laughs> You get all that. You We're talking that. hardcore, then, like Cannibal Corpse, stuff like that, then, huh? Oh, there's a lot. Dude, some, like Grindcore. Yeah. And, um, there's a huge uh, scene of that here in Dallas, and I know in San Antonio there's a lot of that. And um, But there's just a lot of good bands. Right. I, I, there's a lot of bands here in town that um, I think should be operating on a more national level, but, you know, it's not something that everybody can do, unfortunately, just because it's, it's not like the 80s. You know, they're just not handing out signing bonuses anymore. Right. And it, it's got it's got to be more of a labor of love as opposed to just trying to, like, hey, we're going to have a band and we're going to get girls and get rich. It doesn't, I mean, no. you, have to really, you have to really love this and really bleed for it to, to make it something that you can put food on the table with. It, you're totally, I mean, I talk to many bands kind of like at your level and that you're trying to get to the next level. And the biggest thing that yeah. I always bring up is you, you, the bands that I've talked to, you have to have the passion because if you don't have the passion, there, people will just overlook that and you're just going to basically fade in the long run anyway. Yeah. You know, a, a guy, um, I don't think he works there anymore, but his name was John. He worked at BMG and uh, he told me something that kind of resonated. He's like, you can fake it if you want. For, you know, as long as you can get away with it, but right. fans will eventually speak through that. Stuff. Yes, absolutely. We're talking with uh, Ryan Ray. He's the lead singer of the band Atticane. Uh Let's talk about this question for you here. Uh, all right. So uh, you guys have a little bit of library of music right now. Not a lot. you got a new album coming out. We're going to chat about that in just a moment. But uh, what artist out there, and since you said you kind of like a little of the pop and stuff too, would you like to cover one of your songs to cover one of our songs i yes. think it'd be pretty cool i think it would be pretty cool for like bruno mars to do hey girl i think he would murder that that would be good. cool yeah that would be yeah, awesome I really, I really enjoy his stuff i think it's uh it's and he's got a cool story too you know because he's been in you know he wrote for a lot of people and uh and that uh i can't remember but the first big single that he had he went to you know he's supposed to deliver the song this is the story i was told so right. i hope it's true but, you know, you're supposed to deliver a song for an artist to the label, and he came into the label, so I got this song, but there's a catch. You have to let me sing it. And they were like, well, okay, 
and they did, and then now we have Bruno Mars. And Bruno Mars is pretty popular now, isn't he? Man, <laughs> I, I, I just I like him. I just like everything about him. You know, I don't I don't care if some of it's like, you know, kind of cheesy girl rock, but it's just whatever he's got that seventies flavor. It just doesn't. It just doesn't to me. Doesn't come off as cheesy, even though I'm sure some people think it is. Well, he got to play in front of the Super Bowl, right? That was pretty good for him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and he did murder that drum solo too. I also like it when artists are not one-dimensional. Right. Absolutely, absolutely. We're talking uh, with Ryan here from the band Attican. Uh How about this? Have you heard your song "Hey Girl" on the radio yet? I have heard it on the radio here in Dallas. Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Take that back. I have not heard it on the radio here at all because um, they have. They're, they're going to start spinning it here. Um, Dallas obviously is a you know a big media market, so it's a clear channel. Right. You know that they. Um, I have a good relationship with. Uh, uh, assistant program director and a couple people down at the uh, the Eagle, but um, you know they're 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 doing they play they're going to play it this weekend on the um, the loud and local, you know because like you said we are still trying to push through that next level and it's I mean I know it's on thirty eight cities or something right now yep. so any and, you know we super super appreciate the the, the spins so um, but no I no I have not. <laughs> Well, I guess the question I was going to ask is, what is it going to mean then for you once you do hear your song on the radio? What do you think it's going to mean to you? Um, you know, it's going to mean to me that um, that we're that we're headed the right direction, and you know, we need to keep working. You know, work is you know, work is the cornerstone of of, of success. You got to work. You got to bust your ass, and I love it. I, I love yeah. it. I love I love getting in here and building the lockers in my trailer and scraping my elbow and bleeding and I just, you know, because I know that that's what is going to get us where we need to be and it just makes me feel that it, it just makes me feel like I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing and providing that for people. So yeah, yeah, here, <laughs> I know I can digress some, but uh, yeah, hearing it on the radio is definitely special to me um, because, you know, prior to being an Atticane, I was playing another band and touring, but it was never my record. It was always you know, I would I joined a couple bigger bands and, and was playing their stuff, and it was so cool. But this is me comes from me, so very it, cool. It, it's definitely special. Hey, if you had to put together a three band bill to play with, so it's Atticane along with a couple other bands, who would be your ultimate band bill? Oh man, like just of all time. Sure, whatever you want. Or, or, whew, I know Metallica would be the, the headliner. I kind of figured that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know that'd be great. Um, I don't know if I'd want to play with Lamb of God because I just they're so just you know not that I'd be scared to, but right. uh, maybe I would be. I don't know. Let's let's be honest here. There there there's something else. But I know Vitalik would be that. Um, I would love um, I'd love nothing more to be on there because right. I really enjoy I really enjoy them. And um, you know, even though I've even though I've done a bunch of tours with these guys, Seven Dust could be uh, the other one just because they're they're just so much fun to to watch i know you know every song inside out and they're you know, i mean you see i'm sure you've seen them live before there's just you know that, that, that saying about seven Fest, if you go to a seven this show watch the side stage so you can see the other bands on the tour just like mesmerized by them <laughs> you know and the cool thing about that that band seven dust and uh i think clint has done a great job is uh he's brought along a lot of young bands and trying to help them out and i i, I liked i like seeing that because you know you need some help from the industry the, the guys that have already established themselves don't you yeah yeah and they've been like that their entire career right so that's yeah it's definitely a cool thing for them very cool. Hey, let's talk about this upcoming CD that's coming out. Your first national album, Never Coming Home, is the album. and It'll be coming out, as you mentioned, November 6th. Uh, talk about what's on it. What's, what's on this album? Well, there's uh, 11 songs, 10 songs, and then a bonus track. And, um, you know, it's, it's a pretty wide variety. I've got, um, uh, you know, the first song is called um, All Goes to Hell, and it just comes out. It's a real heavy hitter um, to kind of get you, get you revved up. And then uh, you know, there's there's a song, no, the title track, uh, "Never Coming Home," is um, melancholy almost, you know, because it's it's about you know, I don't know, I kind of it's not my life personally, but um, you know, our guitar player and a couple people that I'm close to, you know, don't have a relationship with, you know, their their parents because they didn't need to, they didn't know them or they failed, you know, so it's kind of that type of thing. And then you just got some some just slammers on there, and then of course we have "Hey Girl," which is um, you know, it sounds like 
it sounds like a like a what am I trying to say like a theory of a dead man or Buck Cherry kind of like girl song. Right. But if, you actually, but if you actually listen to the lyrics, it's actually got a positive message because it's really saying you don't have to be a whore to get attention. You know, so yep. it's kind of like it's kind of disguised in there. But um, and then we have a song on the on the uh, towards the end called Fight Back. It's actually um, actually wrote that for the uh, the military because. I actually um, am part of a uh, a cover group on the side that we go and we perform um, shows for the troops on the military bases. Very cool. Um, yeah, and we give like lessons to the troops and stuff. Like it's called Operation Rock the Troops. If anybody wants to look that up, but um, yeah, we we give we give music lessons to the to the troops and their families on base for free, and then we perform for them. So I wrote that song about them. It's it's pretty heavy too, but. Um, that was yeah, oper- just, uh, that was operations rock the troops. Um, operation rock the troops. Okay, cool. Yeah, uh, yeah, you can look that up on Facebook, and there's a, a website. It's actually a not for profit now. So uh, my 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 good friend uh, Matthew J C runs that, and he um he spent ten years getting the uh five hundred one c three. Yep, five hundred one c three. Well, yeah. So our listening audience is uh, literally we're six miles away from the largest base in Minnesota here, so we have a lot of this is this town, Excellent. Little Falls, is uh, all Army, basically National Guard kind of deal. Excellent. So uh, yeah, definitely, well, I, I enjoy those. I enjoy those shows thoroughly because it's like I can tell how much it means to them. And right, um, yeah. Well, that that just kind of leads into my next question a little bit. Uh, touring wise, have you ever been up to Minnesota to tour? I have. Um, I've played, oh, what's the name of that venue? Um, First Avenue, right? <laughs> yeah, I know I've played that one. Okay. What's, what's, the one in, what's the one in Milwaukee? Oh, uh, the Rave? Yes, I played there. Um, so, I, and there's a few other cities in Minnesota I know I've played in. I think okay. uh, St. Paul. Okay, maybe Roy Wilkins yeah. or uh, it's maybe in a smaller level, too? You know, I'll be perfectly honest with you. Um, about five, six years ago, when I was touring, I right. used to do a lice and party, like a lot. So there's a lot of Hey, you're in a rock band and you're partying. What's going yeah. on here? Well, believe it or not, I'm sober now. Like it's, it's been about three, three and a half years. Well, congratulations uh, on that. That's a big accomplishment. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I wanted to make sure that I was around so I could do this right yeah and that, you know that's the thing i don't think a lot of people realize too in this industry in that you know you think all the glamour you think oh yeah partying all the time but you know what even bands like the motley Crue's and that they knew after a while they had to settle down here else they weren't going to make it very long yeah you're going to die or you're going to blow your voice out right you know there's just a, a, a number of things that go wrong but uh, you know there's nothing wrong with having a good time absolutely unfortunately unfortunately i you know, i took a little too far so i had to uh cut that off <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're finishing it up here with Ryan Ray's the uh, lead singer of the band Attican. I know you kind of already talked about it at the very beginning when we started this interview, but let's see if people have caught on since uh, started this interview. Let's find out, how do you get to know more about the band Attican? How can they find out more information about you guys? The best way is just go to our website. It's just Atticane.com, very simply put, and you can really link to any of our social media from there. Um, you can... See our tour dates, our gallery, our online, our online merchandise store actually um, is going live later this evening. We just uh, cool. We had a couple. We had some merch last year. We, we we got rid of all of it and we redid it all completely. And I had the same artist. His name's Trevor Neiman with Visual Visual Entropy. I had him do all of our um, the same guy that did the album artwork do all of our merch. And um, so that's all up there. Um, and just you know, you can listen to Hey Girl and also We Crawl. Um, on the website, you can just listen to them for free, and, and just link to any other sites to buy the album, or um, just any of that stuff. The way it's pretty comprehensive, and it's pretty, it's very, very easily navigatable. I don't think that's a word, but hey, you made it up now. Works for me. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> sounds great. And uh, "Never Coming Home" is the new album that's coming out on November sixth, and they can pre-order that right now, right? Yep, yep. Like I said, uh, at Google Play and iTunes, you can pre-order the album for five ninety nine, and when you pre-order it, you get. Hey, girl, and we crawl as two uh, instant gratification tracks. So you can get a, you know, get our album for a little bit cheaper and get it before it comes out. And uh, uh, oh yeah, one more thing: the, when the online merch store does go live, tonight, yeah. it'll be it should be tonight or first thing in the morning. We're doing some specials, like when you hear the, the first, I think, fifty people to order. We're going to do some signed things, um, some, some handwritten lyric sheets that are signed and that kind of thing. So you know, just some, some cool stuff to. 
to, to get Very back. cool. So when you yeah. see about 40-some people from Minnesota on there, you'll be like, yeah, they were listening to The Dark, checking us Absolutely. out. Absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome, awesome. Hey, it's been a lot of fun talking to you, and uh, hopefully uh, I know you guys are going on a tour here with Trapped coming up here in the next few days and kind of a southern swing, but hopefully uh, in the near future we see you up here in Minnesota again. That'd be great. You you will because um, next day, you know, come the spring, we're going to be on tour most of next year, and, you know, everybody knows that the uh, – Midwest of this country, you know, uh, Minnesota and those states up there in the right. north. That's just that's just where you guys are the best, man. You guys love music. We do love our music, and we love our Attacane, too. And you know what? Everybody wants to hear your latest song, Hey Girl. Are you okay if we play that right now for you? Absolutely. All right. Thanks so much, Ryan. We appreciate it. Thank you, man. I'll talk to you soon. Once again, that is Ryan, and he's the lead singer of the band Attacane. You want to hear their latest song? Here it is right now. It's Hey Girl. It's the dark. It's FM 94.